Welcome back to Movie Show Plus. I'm Greg Russell, and as you know, we like talking to filmmakers, people who've got movies coming out. And if you want to see something really funny, this guy right here, Jeff Nimoy, has a brand new movie called Famish. <laughs> Which, because uh, I'm not quite famous. Right. I'm Famish. <laughs> and it's all about, because now you've been a voiceover actor for many years uh, for anime and different things like that. And it's right. about going to an anime convention, you know, like right. the Comic Cons. And yeah. that is just hilarious. Like, you know, you and I even talked off camera about if you've never been to one, you should go at least once. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely uh, an interesting scene, for, to, to put it mildly. You know, the cosplaying can get really, really creative, you know, and uh, people show up in these amazing costumes that sometimes take years to put together, you know. It's pretty, pretty impressive. And now you're playing yourself. So yeah. I, I'm sort of playing myself. Right. Much like, much, I'm playing a fictionalized version of myself, much like Larry David did in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Right. Or uh, I like to say uh, Matt LeBlanc in Episodes, another great show. And uh, Steve uh, Coogan did it in the Trip movies. So yeah, it, yeah it's sort of like uh, I had to figure out how to solve a lot of problems making this movie. And one of them was, I was a guest at this convention, as were some of the other stars in the movie. Yeah. And we had a real problem of like, our pictures are everywhere and our names are everywhere and our, our, the programs have our pictures and names in it. And I really thought maybe even while filming a scene, someone might run up, run up to us and say, Mr. Nimoy, can I get an autograph? <laughs> And if my name is Bob Smith, this fictional actor, and they come up and say, Mr. Nimoy, the take is ruined. Right, So right. I thought, well, if it's a live convention, let's take advantage. And if someone comes up, we'll just keep playing the scene as I sign the autograph and stay in character as this fictional Jeff Nimoy. <laughs> and, and, and your guy, he, he's, because I, I, I know that thing too in the beginning, he said, I don't want to do this. We'll pay you $3,000. Let me get okay. my bag. <laughs> Well, my character is uh, sort of uh, down and out. He's not made money for the last 10 years, and he can't go back to anime for personal reasons, and we find out what those reasons are throughout the movie. But uh, the only way he can make a living is in anime. So he reluctantly goes back, and he, he is treated like a god at this convention. And in L.A., personally, I'm just a guy, Jeff Nimoy, who cares, you know? Right. But at a convention, I'm Paul McCartney. So, oh, so I wanted to take guy. a break. <laughs> there, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, I how about that Naruto, pretty good show, eh? eh? So I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I go to this convention and I fall for all the pitfalls of celebrity. But of course, this celebrity is much smaller than Paul McCartney. It's a much <laughs> smaller scale. So, you know, it's cosplaying girls falling in love with me, actors who were young enough to remember me when they were kids, and they have a crush on me. And mm -hmm. the fans, of course, are all into it. So it, it just all played into my career and the movie, and it all came together in Famish. And uh, I'm gl so glad you liked it. Oh, I did. I did. I mean, I said, it's, it's a funny movie, and like we said, if you've ever been to one of the conventions and ever had to work it out there, you, you <laughs> understand and get it all. Yeah. And like you said, with your guy, if he's there, because you know you got to make money and all like that, and then next thing you know, weird things happen in relationships for him, <laughs> and it's all over a weekend. <laughs> right, it's all one weekend. That's what a con is. It's one weekend. And take it from me, you can have a complete love affair in one weekend that begins as a middle and an end <laughs> right right <laughs> all all from friday and the sunday uh, i i also don't want to make people think they can't watch this movie if they've never been to comic oh right right it, that's just a background i look at it as a, just a romantic comedy this one happens to take place at a small anime convention in madison wisconsin uh but you know, it's it's an office comedy, but this office is a convention, so. That's I right. Want, I don't want to make people think they have to be a. a oh, no, no, no. I, I was going to say, you'll, you'll like it, because like you said, the jokes and everything alone are, it's you know. A, it's a romantic comedy. Right. It really is. It really is. Now, how long did it take you to shoot this? Get it all together. Okay, so I 
because this was such a micro budget, let me tell a little bit of backstory first to lead up to why it was such a small budget. Yeah. So it, I, uh, I experienced uh, a health scare mm -hmm. back in 2017. I had a brain tumor, oh, wow. but it's all good now. They good. got it all. Good. And I don't recommend anyone getting a brain tumor, but right. I recommend everyone surviving a brain tumor <laughs> because right. it changes your perspective of life and it moves your bucket list way up. And number one on my bucket list was to write, direct, and produce a live action movie. I've done animated movies my whole career, but I've never done a live movie. I didn't necessarily want to star in it, but I did go to NYU to School of the Arts. Oh, if you hear some banging, sorry. <laughs> live Zoom People the time They're watching the movie upstairs going, <laughs> Jeff! I don't think Jeff, the floor we love it! <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I recovered from the brain surgery and I just said, I've got to make a movie. And I really had no money to make it at all. Um, so I just approached friends and conventions and hotels and airports. And I just said the same thing. I said, uh, uh, I don't know if this movie is going to be any good. I don't know if anyone will see it. I just have to make a movie. And if you want to help me, join. And people sort of like took in my story and wanted to help me and you could see from the production value what you know we've got a whole airport the Madison yeah. airport gave us the southern terminal to oh build. wow uh, yeah i mean if you want to make a movie don't do it in la because i would have had to get so many permits and you know right. it would have cost me a fortune to do it at lax but the Midwest, they're more than happy to let yeah. you, you know, come. So please make movies in the Midwest, please, everyone. <laughs> come to Michigan. Come to Michigan. Yes. Oh, Michigan. Sure. Next time. So famous two, Michigan Comic Con. There you go. <laughs> we'll do apple picking in the fall, the whole thing. Fabulous. <laughs> Donuts and apple cider. <laughs> oh, you have been here. Yes. Great. <laughs> I've been everywhere, convention wise. I always try to pick the best of that. You know, I went to right. Michigan in the fall. It was great. Anyway, going back to your original question about budget and how long. <clears throat> so I actually had to take a year off from working. I, I, I took no jobs just to plan this movie. So we shot it in six days in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and then six days in Madison. But those six days in Madison were 80% of the movie. Right. So that one year off was really to plan those six days <laughs> to the minute. Uh, we didn't have, we, we went in on a, a Monday night. Mm -hmm. There was a flood in Madison, the biggest flood in Madison's history. Oh, geez. The, the airport closed as we landed. The hotel and roads closed as we got there. And they all opened up miraculously in the morning <laughs> when we had to start shooting at the airport. And other actors had to land. They right. just, they opened it up just in time. Miracles were happening left and right on this movie, you know? Right. Which has to happen on a good movie, to tell you the truth, you have to get lucky. So uh, we, we planned things down to the minute in those six days. The crowd arrived on Friday. Mm -hmm. So we got all of the scenes with extras and the fans from Friday to Sunday. That's all we had, wow. to, you know? So, so that's why it was so planned. So it was parts of 12 days, not every day was a full day, one right. day was an hour, you know, but parts of 12 days over the course of a year. Man, yeah. well, like I said, it was great. It was fun. And like you said, just get in six days, knock it out. Yeah. And you had a great film. Now, Thanks. if anybody wants to see this, where can they go? How can they? Get they can go everywhere. I, I was very lucky. Like I said, I didn't know if it was going to be good or anyone could see it and we had this premiere in los angeles a screening not really a premiere yeah. and uh we uh the crowd was went nuts and you could tell afterwards the q a they were genuine they weren't doing it because they knew me and they knew you know other people in the movie like lex lang right they were they were into it and they had some they most of them were like i can't believe thank you for making a good movie i have to see all my friends bad movies when they invite me to these screenings <laughs> Thank, that's what almost every question in the audience was, thank you for making a good movie that didn't waste my Thursday night. <laughs> oh, man. So they can see it. So, so when we finished and we went and we started, you know, um, trying to sell it to, to, um, 
to distributors, you know, movie distributors for a digital, the, the kind of film like this doesn't get a theatrical distribution deal. The best we can hope for is digital. Right. And we got one that's international. Random Media loved it. And they put it on almost every video on demand platform there is internationally. So if you have Amazon, wherever you like to watch your, your movies, Amazon, iTunes, PlayStation, Fandango, wow. cable, whatever your cable network is, it's probably there. It's not hard to find. <laughs> well, fantastic. Folks, it is well worth it to find it because, like we said, at this time especially, we need something to laugh about, and this one will just get you going. And also, Jeff, have to just ask this because I know people will be going, Nimoy, I've heard that last name hmm. before. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, Leonard was my son. <laughs> I raised him to be a good boy. Yes, you did. Uh, <laughs> Leonard is my, get this right, the second cousin, once removed. Uh, if anyone's interested in hearing more about my relationship with Leonard, I wrote this article that's very popular. It's called The Other Nimoy. These are the voyages of a second cousin once removed. <laughs> it's on medium.com. You can find it everywhere. I'm not hard to find on the internet. I'm, I've been around for a long time. But Leonard, uh, people will love to know that Leonard was just the most amazing guy, the most generous guy. I miss him every day. He is such a wonderful man to me personally. Mm -hmm. He and I had a very close relationship. There are only three of us in showbiz, Nimoy's, him, his son Adam, and yeah. myself. So. You know, Leonard and I really, really had a very special relationship. I miss him. Oh, fantastic. Jeff Nimoy, fame-ish. Check it out, folks. Thank you so much. Can we get you back on, you know, other times? Greg, anytime. Please check it out. www.fame-ish-movie.com. All right. Jeff Nimoy, thank you so much. And we'll be back with more Movie Show Plus coming up. Great! <laughs> Yay! I'm so glad.